Okay, here we go. Good. Nice. All right. So, so I, was, I spent um, a little bit of time coming up with like the little books, little super little ones that my kids and I used to read. Like one was called Jamberry. Oh, nice. I like that. Yes. And then I have one about dragons. You know, it's a pop up book, I believe. No, it's not. It's big and fancy. Um, and I have Charlotte's Web. So we're not going to read Charlotte's Web, of course, but you probably are all familiar with the story. I know I am. And you're not familiar with Charlotte's Web? Oh, well, I'll tell you about the story at least. And that, that's something you should definitely read. Um, so for me, I, I, you know, I do want to just sort of dive in and, and you guys could decide if you want me to do an example first, I'm happy to. Um, I truly am sort of winging it. I have a couple of books from Zimbabwe that I have have actual activities that I wrote for, but I'd really rather use these. Um, to me, it's a lot like the global math stories. So <clears throat> there's a, a this thing called the Bishop Six. The six ways people use math, and I'm gonna forget a couple of one of them, um, but people use math in everyday life, right? And, and we know that, but if we uh, can identify each of those ways that helps us a little bit. So if you think about like walking through the market or walking around in a playground, people use math to describe things, right? They use math to measure things. Uh, they use math to count, that's obvious. Um, they use math to locate, um, to compare. And there's one more, to play. Um, and so, and I think there's another one in there. I'm just, I can, I have to, I should have had that pulled up. Um, I actually can pull that up. Um, let me do that. But you guys, you can see that, right? And so every story, you can find the math in every place, right? Um, you know, in the, in the um, uh, story about picking apples, okay? So I have to be home by my curfew's five o'clock, you know, and I have to get six apples. It takes me a certain amount of time to get each apple. How, how am I going to do it? Or... I have a ladder that has, you know, six steps on it, and each step is only, you know, what, 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters and needs to get to a certain height. So there's lots and lots of ways where I, I collected six apples, but ate some on the way home. And when I got home, there were three left. How many did I eat? Did I have a stomach ache? You know, just all those kinds of things. Um, oh, let me see if I can get that. Here we go. Bishop six. Okay. So we use, use math to play to design, to locate, to measure, to count, and to explain. Those are the things that we do. And, um, and that happens in everyday life, right, all the time. And so as you read the stories, think about the math questions that, you know, make you wonder, like, what do you notice? What do you wonder? That's a, another famous thing that people are saying these days. So would someone like to start, like, with a story and tell us their story and, um, and then tell me the math that you're coming up with. We'll listen to it, the math, what the task is maybe. And then um, we can all come up with questions that we would have, math questions. Or I can start, what would you like? Does anyone want to volunteer? Yes. I, I prefer it um, actually uh, a workshop, kind of workshop, small, really small is the sheet with questions but with images that will that can be useful for the activity mm -hmm. but i'm not sure if i want to be first <laughs> okay wow you did your you really did your homework pal i'm um, so so uh happy with the activity i felt uh, like the university again so i was really happy doing this homework <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah well um how about i do this little story about not the hippopotamus Okay, so you wanna do that one? This is one I used to read these to my kids. That's why they're all uh, raggedy. Um, I probably actually have this one memorized. How about Jamberry? This is super easy because uh, it's got numbers in it as it is, right? So um, so like here it says like one berry, two berries, pick me a blueberry. Yeah, see I had this memorized from literally 15 years ago. Hatberry, shoeberry, and my canoeberry. What's the next one? Under the bridge and over the dam, looking for berries, berries for jam. Can't believe I remember this. Uh, what's the next page? 
Oh, it's just a picture of the everything falling. So we can stop there. Any question, like any math questions that come up for you? I mean, there's the obvious, right? But what 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 do you think, Alex? Yeah. So I'm thinking about the berries and thinking like how many berries are, do you need to, like, how many are you yes. looking for? And the last picture that you just showed, it's almost like a, the spatial sort of, if those are berries that are falling, are those, yes. is that what it is? Those are berries, yes. How many? So I don't know, even something like that, like how, like how many berries do you think are in, are here? Or is this enough berries yes. to make the, the jam or something like that? Alex, I love that question. This is exactly why I'm so reticent to give lessons for every global math story because that's a great question. How many berries do you think are on this tape page? That's an awesome question for a kid to ask. Someone's gonna, a little kid's gonna say a million, bazillion, gazillion. And then you go, how big is that number? Um, and, but then we may go, let's just count a little corner. Now, what do you think? That's awesome. Any other ideas? Reminds me a workshop that Maria Hernandez did once in, at the Galapagos in, uh, when she explained the definition of Suva Titan. Uh -huh. and, uh, after she did that kind of question, like how many there are, um, then she gave the, the teachers or the students some minutes. Still mm -hmm. will not be enough to count them at all, but uh, at least to have an idea, a better idea, rather than having just the first thought 100 or 500 or, or whatever, and then try mm -hmm. to, to explain why you think which is the pattern you are looking. So you can say maybe looking at the half or divide it into quarters or whatever. But the, the idea was how you can measure without measuring, without counting one on one. one, one, one. Yeah, yeah. One question I'm thinking is, he just fell over the dam with his canoe. Um, let's pretend the dam is five feet high. About how high is that? Is there anything in here that's five feet high? How do you know it? That's could be good. Or um, yeah, Alex had applied, had gotten to the sort of if it takes me, you know, fifteen berries to make a pie, and I've collected three. How many more do I need? Super easy questions. Okay, so here we go: three berry, four berry, hay berry, strawberry, fingers, and Paul berries, my berry, your berry. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting this now. Strawberry pony, strawberry jams, looking for berries, berries for jams. So you can also have them count, right? That's an easy one. How many, how many, how many ponies do you count here? It's all about how old they are and listening to their answer. That's the key, right? And what's cool is I think, you know, if, if a teacher did this, a teacher would never say, okay, here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, everywhere. They would go, well, how do you count them? Let's put our fingers on each one. But you know, if we have a lecture book, we're going to tell them, or, oh, you do this. Um, train berry, track berry, click berry, clack berry. So have you ever seen a train berry? I've never have. So how many, how many trains are in there? Here's another question of how many, how many berries do you think are in there? How many pies can you make with these berries? So raspberry, jazzberry, rasmataspberry, berry band, berry man, look, jamming in berry land. So, all right, so this is the, this is the story. Um, you know, you could do, you could do this, a, a question I might have is, so I am watching the Berry Land Jam Bree play some songs and it takes three minutes to play each song. I have to be home in 15 minutes. How many songs can I hear? Um, that's a, a cool question because do I leave time to get home? How much time will it take me to get home? And hopefully someone will see that. All right, so that's it. Do you guys need me to hear you and listen to the rest or is it good? All right, I'll do it. Raspberry, raspberry rabbit, raspberry band, look, elephant skating on raspberry jam. And I used to always stop at the end and Charlotte would go, raspberry jam. But now she wouldn't, she'd just roll her eyes at me. Moonberry, starberry, cloudberry, skyberry, um, and what's the last one? Mountains and fountains rain down on me, berries, buried in berries. What a jam berry. Okay, there you go. And that's it. So you think about all the math we found in that book? 
I think that's, and it's everywhere, right? All right. Any other questions or or other activity? Like, what other tasks or math things can you think of it in that in that book? With the picture that, you, that there were all the berries up there, I was thinking. I don't know. Maybe with older children, you can mm -hmm. actually ask them like, how many baskets do you need to actually carry them, or mm -hmm. something like that. Because, mm -hmm. but I don't know if uh, the children, our young children, will be like. <laughs> see, uh, yeah, I will be saying like or mm -hmm. having the concept of that and this is my niece i'm at my uh, sister's house Hi, today hello buenos hola uh, hola. <laughs> hola hola <laughs> yes hans i like that problem especially in this this tactic mm -hmm. yeah but i don't but uh, that would be a good question like how mm -hmm. old the sakit will have to be to answer that kind of question will a five-year-old like my niece <laughs> will no. know what what to answer or will have an estimate or when is it appropriate to introduce that question to our children. Right. Well, so I think that's the, you know, a teacher, this is what I love about this idea is teachers are, they almost always read to their students at some point, right? And there's a reading time. And, mm -hmm. and so instead of having a reading time and now we're going to go do math, everyone sit down and put your paper and pencil. You can ask the questions and your teacher, teachers are going to know their students and they're going to know what the curriculum is so they can ask a question about their curriculum. It depends, right? Yeah. I have another idea about yeah. the, the book. Maybe um, I saw the, the, the carritos, the really the, the ones that are um, ah, prismas rectangulares. I still don't know how to say that in English. How will that really? be? Rectangular prism. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I'll ask about the geometry, for example. And yes. Which do you think will be better? Maybe if you choose a different geometry for mm -hmm. the cars. So what will happen? And since we are talking about something that's countable, then we can try it and then do the exercise that we did. We usually do with this grid map. Do having this um, maybe a paper and trying to I don't have any. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, look at the cars, and if, if yes. it's not rectangle, it's a uh, circle based, then you will have something right. like that. And which one is, uh, will have more berries like this or like this? This kind of mm -hmm. questions will be, can match oh. perfectly there. Yes. And actually, you can try because you can use beans or whatever as the mm -hmm. berries, thinking as the berries problem to try to That's figure great. out which has more. Which holds more, and you're going to find that circles hold more, right? Yeah. So then yeah, you'd have to ask, why are they making them rectangular? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Something great. that I've been thinking about, though, because too, even just from what Hans asked, and then your response, Chad, mm -hmm. is thinking particularly about estimation and how important estimation is, and how yeah. actually curriculums don't explain, or maybe I don't know if it's that the curriculums don't explain it, but often. When teachers and students think about estimating, they think like I'm rounding this number to the nearest 10, 100,000, whatever. And so mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily get to, to really building number sense when that is one of the most real world skills that we use all of the time with math. And so that's something too that, that I've found that needed to be called out for me because when I was teaching, I didn't think of it in, in that mm -hmm. way. I thought estimation is rounding. <clears throat> and now I understand that it's so much more than that. Yes. Um, and it's something that I also in, in talking with teachers often find that like that's kind of a oh yeah you're right like when I think about it I don't often like yes I round but I don't do it thinking I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth you know like mm -hmm. I'm making estimations because it's easier to do when I don't need a precise number in, in all of these different ways um, mm -hmm. and so yes. I think that's something we could pull out for teachers in these kinds of activities is talking mm -hmm. about the importance of things like estimation um, and then how to do it. Me se me ocurre que luego de la lectura del cuento y así de estar como todos animados de decirles que yo vi que son osos y creo que sí son ositos que ahora les toca a ellos convertirse en osos y que vayan al patio, al corredor, a donde estén y les toca recolectar como hoy vamos a recolectar hojas. Hoy vamos a recolectar piedritas y todas las vamos a ir como contando, ¿verdad? Dependiendo del grado. Los semejo por el grado, ¿verdad? Entonces, luego como comparar 
eh, Cali recolectó tantas, eh, Chaz recolectó tantas hojitas, eh, Hans recolectó tantas, eh, son iguales, diferentes, ¿por qué? Y empezar ahí, ¿verdad? A cuestionarlos. So, Fatima, I, I don't know what you want me to translate that. Just roughly, because I think <laughs> sure. I sort of got it. She, yeah. Sure. So, she's proposing an idea, for example, with the first graders. Uh, you can actually ask them to yeah. become the bears at that point. Yes. And mm -hmm. you go outside and pick up some stones oh. or leaves. And then when you go back to the classroom, you can actually ask uh, how many did Cali got and compared to the others. Hmm. So that's the activity that she's proposing with that, like asking them to turn into the, the bears of the story. The characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone who's been working with children. Great idea. They, yeah, um, I love that. And even there, you know, the thing that Callie said about estimation is, I mean, every mathematician starts the problem with an estimate, always. Unless you could do it, unless it's something simple like three plus two, I don't need an estimate. But I mean, if you say, well, what's, what's the sign of pi over three? I'm going to be like, well, it's not going to be more than 21. It's going to be, you know, like what are, it's going to be positive, negative. I mean, it's always, there's an estimate and, and, and that's, it's foundational. So, and it happens in real worlds as opposed to the books. Mm -hmm. And what I remember from school is like, if the question was saying, estimate the sum of this, we would mm -hmm. solve the problem exactly and then round the number to have an right. estimation. Like, mm -hmm. why, would, why did we do that? The, mm -hmm. That, yeah. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, the things we learn as adults that I wish we learned as a kid. Someone said, today I was working with a group of teachers and um, describing this kind of thinking. She described it as a massage for the brain, which I loved. Um, so we should definitely be doing some more brain massages here. Estimation being like the, the brain massage? That's what you well, mean? just this kind of math where I'm having to think about it. Okay. Yes. I was yes. thinking I can even use that kind of uh, book for uh, students in uh, at the university. I was thinking on my, hmm. well, my, my brain is working in math in uh, high level right now and thinking, oh, how will I use that in statistics? And then I think, oh, oh maybe yeah. I will use subitizing just for estimation, estimating, and then try. I, I will actually have the 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 the, the number of uh, of the fruits that will have will be there, and then I'll ask them just estimation and try to 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 know if there's a. Now my words in English are bad. Will be a sesgo, like um, mm -hmm. what's the uh, Hans Alex. Kali, what will be a sesgo? No, no conozco. Sesgo. Yeah, when you in the mean when you sesgo, cuando haces co predict something, hmm. but you are like pointing out something that's not where the mean actually is, and you have something that's well, you with you can't outlier. 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 No, it's not outlier. Oh. No, okay. when you are uh, how far you are from the objective when you're targeting standard deviation. No, it's yeah. not variance. <laughs> You need that to calculate standard deviation. Right, variance. Um, no, it's not. Okay. You need that to cal calculate variance. But that's the definition. X prime X inverse. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but uh, that's important concept in uh, statistics that you you need in order to understand how mm -hmm. far you are from the mean. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what you use to describe what a standard de deviation is, and I mm -hmm. will use that maybe in a class. Saying like try to look and I, I definitely think that my students will say something that's really wrong from the like mm -hmm. far away from the actual uh, number so I will try to calculate that yes I like that I mean you could even go you know you know in each each of these well you remember the train one here we go we say each each of these each of these train holds you can give estimates right a number you know 12 times and five times and 18 times and then you could say uh you know the new trains can hold 32 times is that significantly better and it takes this much fuel to run those new trains is it worth it i mean yeah you could totally take it to the high level or you can keep it very simple that's bias bias was worth bias yes bias that's a good word yeah very important and fancy all right Who's next? 
I can be next. Okay. Right. Here's my book. Um, this is one of my favorite um, writers. It's Mo Willems, and it's my favorite writer from my son too. So it's in English, it's in Spanish, but you can, it, it actually, it's the original language is in English. So I'm not sure if I want to read it or I can show you a short video about that. <laughs> you, could, you could totally read it because I'm the only one here who's not, and I can figure it out. Well, it's really simple because uh, it's a lot of the images in short mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll learn more. Estamos en un libro. Okay. Gracias. Thank you. So it's really important for you to see the images because it's all about the images. Cerdita. ¿Qué quieres, girl? Piggy, it says the name actually. I think someone is looking at us. Yo creo que alguien nos está mirando. Alguien nos está mirando? So, is someone looking at us? ¿Quién nos está mirando? Who is looking at us? Is that a monster? Is un monstruo? Mm, no. It is. Es. Mm, un lector. It's a reader. A reader. A reader that it's reading us. Un lector que nos está leyendo. ¿Cómo es que un lector nos está leyendo? How is that that a reader is reading us? El lector está leyendo las palabras dentro de estas burbujitas. Well, the reader is reading the, the words that are in this bubble, read, the bubble words. We are in a book. <laughs> Estamos en un libro. Are we in a book? Estamos en un libro. Wow, but what a great thing. Qué genial. We are in a book. We are in a book. They are reading us. They are reading us. Nos están leyendo. Estamos en un libro. Ah, I got an idea. Tengo una idea. Puedo hacer que el lector diga una palabra. I can make it the, word, the reader say a word. ¿Puedes hacer que el lector diga una palabra? Can you do that? Yes, I can. Sí, puedo. If the reader is reading out loud. Sí, el lector lee en voz alta. What a good idea! Qué buena idea! What a funny idea! Qué idea tan graciosa! Allá voy! <clears throat> Banana! <laughs> Plátano! Ahí se ríe mucho. <laughs> Está muy chistoso el chiste. <laughs> Banana! Have you heard that? ¿Has oído eso? The reader said, banana. <laughs> es muy bueno. Oh, he did it again. The reader said it again. El lector lo dijo otra vez. Ah, qué risa. No sé qué sería como que risa. What? Fun is it? Okay. Do you want to do it now? ¿Quieres hacerlo tú ahora? Antes del fin del libro, before the book ends. Ends? Fin? 
The book ends. El libro tiene fin. Yes. Every book has an end. Todos los libros tienen un fin. And when is that end? Y ahí yo haría una pregunta. Try to predict it. <laughs> and look at this and try to say, when is the book ending? Y, um, Alfie. Page 50, 57. Y aquí, aquí es de hecho donde me baso. Ah, sorry. Here's the, the time that I did my whole workshop in this moment because uh, I asked them, well, I'll show you then. Let me finish the book. It's almost finished, almost end. This is great. So you look at this page, you see the end, but you don't mm -hmm. see the actually number of the book. So this is an important thing that I'm using then. Mm -hmm. Page 57. We are already in page 46. Estamos en la página, si ya estamos en la página 46. Oh, and now in 47. This book goes so fast. Este libro va muy deprisa. I have a lot to offer. Tengo mucho que ofrecer. More words, more, more jokes, more bananas. Más palabras, más chistes, más plátanos. I just want them to read me. Solo quiero que me lean. Oh, I have an idea. Tengo una idea. <laughs> Special effects. That's a great idea. Es una buena idea. Hey, hi, could you please read us again? ¿Podrías leernos otra vez? I hope it works. Me too. Espero que funcione. Yo también. Yeah, that's my favorite book. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's such a cool book. Yeah, that's it awesome. is. I love it. So mm -hmm. one of the ideas that I was thinking is using the recursive, like uh, the loop, because mm -hmm. every time I read this, or the first time I read, I wanted to go back to the first, and you can actually uh, understand why the book starts with that. Thank you, and you can uh, yes, right. very beginning. It's really fun, and that's something uh -huh. that you should notice after you read. But you need to have the book, so that's why I think this is the kind of activities that the, the, the students need to have the book so they can explore it and mm -hmm. try to figure out with some workshop. So now I'm going to share. Can I share something? Yes, uh, yes, I think you had the power to share. Okay. I don't think I need to give you permission, but yep. Do you good. see what um, I have here? Yes, uh -huh. yes, got it. So after that, what I was thinking is maybe working on going back to that page after we read the whole book and say, let, let's go again from page 40. Mm. And uh, where, the, where they start to say, the book has an end and that part. Mm -hmm. Here's also, uh, I'm going to share this with you so you can go back to the book here. Just click in here. And well, the, the, the questions I thought will be really useful or engaging. Wow. Well, first, um, since you are looking at this picture, mm -hmm. uh, how many pages must Piggy turn to see the end of a book? Mm -hmm. but, um, I don't know how to translate this because in Spanish, <coughs> there's a difference between the page like the number page and actually the sheet, the, the page, the whole page. Right, from right. Two by two. <clears throat> it's not the same question, like the page is just oh. um, making the difference. Right. Divided it into, into by two, but you should count what happened. Or you can just count, but then mm -hmm. explain what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my first questions. Then I oh. thought, well, which kind of numbers cannot Piggy see when turning the pages? And why? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So I was thinking, well, I, I would like you to think what kind of answers do you think that the students will have? Mm -hmm. Any ideas? I would love, love to see because I did this activity with my son. So I got a lot of different answers that I, some of them I didn't expect it, but it was. Yeah. Fun. 
I know I'm always interested. What are your guys' thoughts? So look at the, 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 the page where it says, I'm going to look for the end of the book. And it's on, and it says, this is in page 57. But you know then that actually the, the number. So, mm -hmm. but you, you can answer so that. He, yeah. So he doesn't see even numbers. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, it, it helps us to develop that idea of yeah. even in odd numbers. Right. Especially and, why. Right. Yeah. And especially why. Why? Yeah. What happened? But my son told me, oh, mom, but it's obvious you won't have also the number 60 or mm -hmm. 100. And I was yes. like, oh, you're right. I yes. didn't expect that answer. <laughs> and he uh -huh. said, well, in neither of the number one. Because I don't know which number, which page are you there, but I remember you were you you had a lot of time spending till you got the, to that point, so wouldn't be in one. So he was trying to estimate his num the name the number. Just remember how much I talked before I got to that part. That's so good. I love yeah. that. And so you can actually take it to like the next level, right? And say, well, so the range of this is is limited. Yeah, and that's why I got the last question. Hmm. Explain what happened if I told you that I have read 100 and one, 114 pages of this book. Oh, good. So he said, no, that's not possible because he said you won't be able to have this, the page number 60 and say, oh, you're right. And then I asked him, that's what I asked him just while we were talking. Oh, so what, what happened if I say that? And he said, no, that's not possible. No, I'm saying I read 101 and 14 pages of this book. So he said, oh, you have to have read this book twice. And then oh. Oh, I'm not sure if twice. Let me check in. And then he remembers 757 was one time. Uh -huh. So, oh, it matches perfectly. You read it twice. Uh, and that's then, great. Yeah, uh -huh. I did the last question that is really a high demand question. That's the extra one. How many times have I heard the banana joke if I have read 144 pages of the book? Mm -hmm. And then is when he realized that it wasn't matching exactly 12, two times like an integral number because it's not 114, yeah. it's not three times, it's between two and three times. So he has wow. to, to calculate the resto, the mm -hmm. The thing that's remaining after you divide mm -hmm, the right, mm -hmm. division. Right. It's a modular arithmetic problem. Right. Yeah. But also he has to count to go, go back to the book and say, well, if it's 114, then yeah. we'll be 30 pages. So mm -hmm. what happened on page number 30? And he had to go back to the number 30 and say, oh, but the number one, once you got to the number 30, you have heard two times the joke, the, the banana joke. In every book, every time you read, you have three. So it will be three plus three plus two. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we can get as deep as we want thinking on this uh, rounding and, and what happened if I, and I, I then ask him, oh, now do, do a question, make a question for me. So he mm -hmm. said, how many times I have read the banana if I have done, I have read 1000 pages <laughs> without actually reading. So he had to divide that and calculate how many and then go back in a wow yeah that really that's complicated math i yeah. love that well this is a hard prop book to come up with other math problems i had a couple that i thought of but what are your thoughts um pa you like kept stayed with the story like that this is breaking that fifth wall is that the third wall i can't remember which wall it is you know have you ever heard that where the actors they talk to the audience that's called breaking a wall and that's what this book sort of does. Um, it's pretty cool. I love the way they do that. Um, but I was actually thinking of problems, math problems within the, within the story too. So um, did anyone else think of any? I know it was super hard, wasn't it, Alex? It was hard, yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, I guess when I was looking at the the imagery, like just of the book to begin with, I started thinking like, is there something with like, I don't know, like with geometry or something there, because the figures are super, super simple. But I don't, I don't have any answers to that. It was just something that I was like thinking about as I saw it. 
Hold on, let's see if I can get to the bishop six. What if I go, oh, dang it, I don't have it handy. Okay, so we can remember the um, whole bishop six, you know, there's the playing, designing, describing, locating, measuring, counting, and um, explaining, explaining. So, and I hear Paul was doing the counting and explaining for sure. You know, like when the, when the, when the little one would spin off do the somersaults, you could say, how far did he jump on that la jump? That was a long jump he made. He must be really excited and have an estimate of, of, of that. <clears throat> that's, that's one you could do. Um, is one a kid and one a grown up? Why do you think that? Um, how big do you suppose they are in real life? That could be something you could ask. Um, yeah, I was thinking when you have this picture, when Kiki is coming to like going to the writer to see who's to the yes, to see, um, I was thinking, uh, well, the, the is it's a piggy in a, an elephant, so you, you should imagine that the elephant is bigger, but in that particular page, the elephant is really short because of the, the perspective. So, I think that's a, also a good uh. Uh, moment where you can talk about geometry and how it looks from the point of view. So thinking, why do you think this is big and this is short and who is a bigger in the reality? And yes. why you can understand that while you are actually measuring different sizes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That's really good. Yeah. Um, and I like right. how your questions also tie to the like comprehension of the story and so it, mm -hmm. that's something that's really neat how the like when you reference going back and then the thank you and how you have to you know and the the point of the book is to repeat and read the book again and then for the math that you were asking it requires going through the book more than one time so i thought that connection to reading comprehension and the math was really was really interesting too mm -hmm. yeah that's, that was good yeah, that was great. And that was a super challenging book, I think, to find that math because it was like just not a whole real world context. It was like just a book context. So that was really good. I like that a lot. But it also illustrates there it's there. The math is everywhere. Truly, it is. It's how do you see it? And um, I'm I've sort of gotten I, I don't know how many times I've gone to workshops or talked to someone and said, there is math everywhere. And that's where they stop. <laughs> you go, what do you mean? Talk about that a bit. And that's what today's about. So who's next? Yeah, and uh, Wait, okay. you go ahead. Well, yes. Um, was the first time I, I well, I choose this book because my, my son uh, chose it. So uh -huh. I, I was hard for me because I, I will prefer something that maybe has numbers on it. And I, I told him, I want to make a math activity. And since I over, always say there's math everywhere, he said, oh, so let's just whatever you want. And I was, no, no, let's just something, something that has at least some numbers so we can do something with them. And he said, no, I like this one. So I was, OK, I should try this. <laughs> but I think that's also how illustrate whenever we think math is all about numbers and it's not. And you said yep. it's about planning, it's about designing, it's about geometry. So that's really a good example how hard I had to work. <laughs> yes. It works because we have man all around the, the box. So, mm -hmm. I like that. right, right, exactly. No, I was thinking about um, when I was a kid. Um, have you guys ever heard of the book A Wrinkle in Time? It was a popular book, and, and for sure, and that's a that's the book our teacher read. And the Rats and Nim is another one I remember. Um, and it was just a story. But you know, if you go back into the story, there's so much math in that. You know, like in this book, bush, it's. The rats live in this bush and it's about this big. How many rats do you think can live there? Why do you think that? Design the rat colony. You know, just here's your project for the day. Design the rat community. Where are the houses? What do you remember from it? Um, how big is, the, you know, like I remember being in Nepal and a kid was building a, a, a house out of cardboard because some organization had donated a whole bunch of stuff. And um, the bed was almost so big that it could barely fit into a room. And I and I teacher was like, isn't this cool what they're doing? And I said, yeah, but what what are the math questions? And you know, when I asked the kid how big is that bed, um, he was flabbergasted. He's like the size of a regular bed. And I said, well, then how big's the room? And he goes, the size of a regular room. 
And then when I asked, how do those two fit together? He's like, oh, and, and it's just being curious. And so um, that's what we want to have. And I hope that more teachers are able to do this because it's, it's right there. It's just sitting there. All right, anyone else got another story now? I have the only book that's in my house, which I kind of feel like is cheating because it's an Orgo book, which is very oh, clearly, helps. literally it's how many animals. And so it is like so clearly math related. Like I, I feel like it's like doesn't, doesn't even count. But then I did find some of what my favorite books were online and like these, all the, there's all these like read aloud online, like YouTube versions of books now. Oh. And, um, and so I was looking at like some of those, like, I don't know, I used to love like Eric Carl books and I used to love like the rainbow fish was one of them. Yeah. And like, just like, I'm like, I'm sad because I have a lot of children's books at my parents' house that I love and that my like niece and nephews have read like re more recently and stuff, but I don't yes. have a ton with me personally. And then there was another one um, that you guys, some of you guys might've seen it, but La Parte Abierta had one that I really um, like as well. That's called Dragons and Tacos. Oh, fine. Um, no. So I guess I'll just, I can share like a, few, a little bit on all that. I guess I won't, yeah, any I won't one of them, yeah. model everything, but I'll just like share some ideas about that mm -hmm. I had for yeah. those different ones. Tell um, us the story too of the, of the one you're choosing, if you can. Okay, like summarize the story of it, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit so we know the context. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to share my screen actually in a second. <clears throat> oh, great. Okay. Dragons, dragons of tacos is this one. And so, um, I mean, you can, oops. Okay, I'm gonna try to like turn the pages as I would if it were an actual book that that I had. But I guess I'm thinking like if, um, if you like have this book in a class and you're thinking about introducing it and thinking about the numbers, right? It's sort of like a dragons of tacos do you love tacos what do you love taco like what do you love about tacos and at some point moving into this like um mm -hmm. like we have hey kid did you know that dragons love tacos they love beef tacos and chicken tacos they love really big gigantic tacos and tiny little baby tacos as well and like i feel like as you're building through this story it's like how, like how many tacos can you eat how many small tacos how many big tacos and yeah. what ends up happening in this story, you'll see, so they go through. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, it's, so what ends up, basically the story is about, they're gonna be preparing, they're gonna be throwing a party and they're gonna, part of, of the dragons loving tacos is they love tacos because they have salsa and it's like salsa picante uh -huh. and they have salsa and like medium salsa and all these different types of, of salsas. And so even looking at like, I know I mentioned it in the chat, but I'm thinking even of like, recipes I know we did something at Maya with um with one of the workshops that was like recipes and how this is like it you're looking at like how much how many more tomatoes are you going to need if you're going to make a portion that's bi like big enough for your whole class or your whole family or just for you and that kind of thing right mm -hmm. or how many tacos are you going to need for this whole this whole party how much of each of the types of salsa would you want to make mm -hmm. um can I there's also so much, you know, like there's estimation there too, right? How much salsa is in that bowl? That's, you know, is it mm -hmm. two liters, a ton, a gram? Um, I, yeah. I think one of the things really important, really interesting when reading recipes is the pro the proportion the, between mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like if, if the recipe says two liters, liter, liter, like two cups or of milk and one cup of something else and you want to do it twice then how yeah. will it be and you're looking to the, the relations between something and something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right like how because then then they're like dragons don't like anything with any spice so like how how much spice would you put in their salsa like those kinds of things like Paul is saying even just like relating it back to what the yeah yeah and then 
ver. Even uh, like in this one, another estimation one thinking, Chad, of like uh, all these tacos that are on the side and they have cheese and taco shells and onions and lettuce and like there's all this visual taco stuff happening. Right. Um, and so it's just like a cute story. It's like kind of, it's just, just like I don't know, cute yeah. kid stories, but it's just like there is a ton in it, I think that could be. Um, oh, yeah. Well, you could even like, say, I have to make 100 tacos today. It takes me, how long do you think it's going to take me? I mean, you could stop there, right? And we can make a higher demand. Now the kids have to decide how long it takes to make a taco, then how long it will take to make 100 of them, as opposed to me telling them. Totally. Yeah, oh, that's great. How many tacos are in that room? Oh, yeah, just all over, right? How many can one dragon eat? Is it two-headed dragon eat more tacos? Is there one? Oh, that's one-headed dragon. <laughs> that's, that's an own. Yeah, how many? Two, the smaller dragons, the bigger dragons, how much do they eat? Like, how much does they eat? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then the other bit of the story is at the end, it's like secretly there is like spicy, the, 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 the salsa has spicy ingredients. And like they find out at the end that they need, or that that is like part of the ingredients and the totally mild salsa. Now with spicy jalapeno peppers. <laughs> now with spicy jalapenos, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, you guys have picked out great stories. That's a great story. Yeah, so if they're using the story at La Puerta Abierta, see this is, Right here, we have this. I mean, they can, they totally should be doing math, mm -hmm. the math here. And there's, it could simply be count the number of dragons on the page or each dragon on this page ate three tacos. Now we're multiplying by three, but have no idea. Or if I said each tag, here's one. If I said each dragon on this page ate three tacos, um, they ate 14 tacos total. Is that possible? No why um so that's that's those are things that we can ask right yeah. yeah i love these books too i love that they're online like this holy cow yeah i was like no it's crazy because it's just things <clears> that i mean when i like i don't know it's i think normal now right to have all this like the online stories that you can read and stuff but if you're looking for a book online like a pdf it's not the easiest thing to find sometimes but there's tons of stuff on. so another resource in case anyone ever is is yeah. looking for that is there can um, you send me the yeah, link because, to that yeah can you send me a link to sure. one of those and i can start looking for them because um sure. yeah i mean yeah there's activities we could do with that too that could be really cool any other questions what are the math things do you think of or because I'm, I'm getting carried away being i'm no longer being sort of teacher like and i'm being more student like just throwing answers out because this is too fun <laughs> and also with the, the, the picture you showed when all the ingredients were in uh, there, a, a, a lot of these ingredients, and I was thinking also, which ingredient do you think will last the most? Because thinking, oh, well, when I prefer tacos, cheese is the, the thing that I use less. So mm -hmm. if you have that kind of amount of cheese, then I will have more, well, everything will be off and I will still have cheese. So that's what I was thinking. And I would like to hear about their thoughts and why. Why do you think this is? Because it looks like you have the same kind of the, the same amount of uh, tomatoes and cheese, but how much you use of cheese in each taco. So how, how you just asking the question, what yep. would you think would happen? Then they will reach out this kind of uh, ways of thinking. So every morning I would make breakfast for back when I used to eat cereal and juice and milk every morning for breakfast. I don't now. Um, I would make breakfast for me and sometimes Jenny, but I found that I like go through a container of milk about once every five days. I go through a box of cereal about once every three days. And then I'd go through um, the orange juice about once every six days. And so there were some days that I was recycling every single container at the same day. And the question is how many days between each time I'd recycle this? Like, what are those days? So if the first one was like on day four, when would be the next time that I recycle all the containers? So you have to find a common multiple. And and Jenny thought I was totally geeky when I got so excited about this. <laughs> so that's good. Yes, Callie. Um. 
Oh, I just shared how I don't right now. Um, I'm sure that there are some. I I love children's books, and I actually like love teaching reading. Um, I miss it dreadfully, and um, have so many children's books in my in boxes right now at my mom's oh. house, like in in the attic of my because my the school that I worked in our library was really. Um, there weren't a lot of books in the library and so I developed very quickly like a very incredible classroom library um, yeah and then here the thing that was going to participate or just stay in slack what do you mean Alex ah, um, I'm just thinking of like these resources and stuff that were posting and it came up again oh my gosh what was the other even when you and I were talking earlier this week about some other just like ed things, and I know we share a lot of things internally in Slack, but it also makes me think about like, is it something that you see fitting into like the kind of things that we're doing in Participate where it's like, here's some recommendations for things that we use also, or I don't know, the learning labs, like this week we were talking about different children's books that you can see math in and here's some of the, it's just, I have no idea if that's even the space where Participate would have that, but I, I'm just, thinking out loud like is that part of yeah ideally we'll build that out um I what I don't want us to do is just start dropping everything in there because then it will become overwhelming but I think if we can like carefully curate and start um building stuff in that become like so that it's more organized than just a ton of resources that becomes hard for teachers to to sift through but definitely would love to have a place so maybe even having a something in participate that's like learning lab resources that's fine um but yeah definitely share in slack for now and, and keep thinking about that and we can definitely do that and um do you guys have you all read harry potter my guess is yes yeah so you know it doesn't have to be the kids books right it could be a harry potter book as well i mean there's you could do height of flying on the on the you know it, you could say you know the first time they fly they can only fly a certain height and he only was able to get to this height or um it could be scheduling like you know you know that they've been out of bounds at one time and had to sneak back to the to the castle in time you know so you can literally go here's their schedule are they going to make it back in time i mean there's just just always questions you know or hippo how big is the hippogriff when it's you know, a baby and how much bigger does it get? And how much bigger is it if it's like this big to Harry Potter and you can find pictures of it. And there's just a lot or, or keeping score of a Quidditch match, you know, and does that even make sense the way those rules are made mathematically? I don't think really it does, but you know, those are the, those are, there's just, this is what I want to encourage. Always think about this regardless of the story, especially in math. Okay. So. Pow, you know, I'm still, I'm trying to think, I feel like at the beginning of the pandemic, someone did share some links with me that included, I don't know if they were audio books or like, or books online, but they were for kids. So I'm going to go back and look at that though. Yeah. No, I mean, some, I got something though from like, from some other places. So I'll see if I can find some that. Yeah, I remember I used it, but they are paid now. We're free for the, for the oh, really? during the okay. pandemic. That's what I was. I was about to write in the chat a question for Pao and Fatima, uh, just because when I, I just opened the link that you sent, Kelly, uh -huh. and some of the books I recognized when I read them uh, when I was, you know, in kindergarten or something. But I'm realizing that most of the books that I probably read back then, they were, ver I mean, Spanish versions of those books. Oh, sorry, but I, I don't think I understood your question. <laughs> what was the question again? My question? Yeah. Yeah, you're just putting it out. Yeah, ah. yeah I'm sorry. No, I was just um, saying that um, most of the books that I, 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 I went to the link that Callie just sent, mm -hmm. and some of those books I recognize, but um, they're obviously uh, Spanish versions of that English version. So I was going to ask you, Fatima and Pao, if you have ever seen books that are actually written in Spanish originally, because mm -hmm. I think most of the books that we have in Spanish, I mean, for children's books, yeah. are translations. I don't think that we, as Spanish speakers, we create a lot of content 
for kids books or things like that. Um, I know in Guatemala there's this one book that obviously Fatima you recognize, Barbuchin, uh, but it's not the kind of same book like this. Like there, there's one story. It's more like a bar, several stories in one book. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just curious about that because I remember the first time that I was um, realizing, for example, that Dr. Seuss books are not originally written in Spanish. And yeah. I, when I read the, the verses in English, I was like, okay, this makes sense now because mm -hmm. the rhymes are in English and they are yeah. trying to try to fit into Spanish and fit it into the rim it, uh, that it has to be in Spanish. But it's, it has a little more sense in English if you read it in, yeah. in, in Spanish first. But yeah, I mean, I was just curious about that and just thinking about maybe there is something in Latin America or our culture that maybe do not create a lot of Spanish um, children's books. That's yeah. Interesting. It's, a, it's actually a pretty big conversation, Hans, in the bilingual education community. And I know like in my master's program and in my literacy classes, we talked about it a lot and how because of that, like many books that can be found in Spanish culturally don't represent students' home lives in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. And so we had to do projects where we found and recommended books that were written in Spanish. And it, it was hard to do. I was actually in Costa Rica at the time that I had to do that. And so I went to some school libraries and, and looked around and Costa Rica does have some. Um, and, but yeah, it, it is like, it's a problem that there's not a lot of authentic. I mean, there is access to it, but there's definitely more translated books than there is authentic literature. Yeah, it is honestly a very good conversation just because uh, I was very familiar, like, like I was saying, with Dr. Seuss. And it actually kind of fill, fills you in with the American culture and things like that. And yeah, I don't, I don't think that there's something that is like re relevant or something specific as for Central America or Latin America. Right. I can say there's a children's book that is specific for us. I know that there are maybe now some stories, but not children's book. Like you actually have the these beautiful uh, pictures and all of that. That that's the beauty of these kind of books, right? That you can actually mm -hmm. see yeah. the pictures and the drawings, and you can tell the story. But I don't think that we have any of those. So sadly, it's not a. I mean, we we are lucky enough to have the translations, but uh, it's not that it, the content or the the you know the target is like the the context will make much sense in Guatemala, at least. Yeah. Um, the same yeah. happened here. And that's yeah, why right? I always dreamed on being one writer. Yeah, you said that your book that you oh. read today was one of a translation of uh, an English version, right? Uh -huh. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. right. I want to be one of that. <laughs> one. <laughs> well, I think. I be pleased to write children's book. That's great. You and J.R. Comfrey, one of our board members, um, does that. She wrote a children's book, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Kelly. And um, well, I was just going to add on to that, like, because in the U.S. now, a lot of research is being done that shows that, like, for example, when the main characters in stories, like, out of, I have some infographic yeah. somewhere that took a bunch of kids' books, and it's like, um, fifty percent, or, or I don't know, of the characters are white and 40% are animals and mm -hmm. like 8% are black and like 2% or almost none are Latinx. And so there's like that representation really matters and it impacts students um, like achievement in reading too, because they're, you know, when they're not able to, to see themselves in stories. And so while right. it's really magical that books can teach you about other people in other places, it's also really important to have plenty of representation of yourself and your community in the books that you read. Um, yeah. My book actually was written in Latin America for um, Latin American context, but it's not for little kids. I mean, it, it kind of is, but so it's Mujeres con todas las letras and uh -huh. each, um, I got it for a girls STEM club, but so it's um, Descubriendo el Universo Femenino de Centro y Sur America de la mano de cinco niños curiosos. And so the book takes you through like these, um, here they are. These kids are the, the storytellers. And so they kind of take turns going through the 27, I think they are, um, 
women from Central and South America who have done different things in wow. in the world. And um, so like for, and this is the book actually that like where I learned about Rigoberta Menchu because she's in here when some of you remember that in Girl STEM Club, we did something with her. Um, and so I was thinking about using this as my example and using the woman from Ecuador, Ermalinda Urbina Mayorga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was the first pilot in, from South America. Oh, wow. wow. And so there's just like each, I mean, I don't have to read all of it, but each woman has the representation, has like two pages like this of text where um, the kids, so this one at the beginning of the book, it tells you the character profiles for each of the kids. So this one is for Tomas. Um, and he's talking about how it's his birthday and he's had such a wonderful, exciting day. Um, he got a paper plane and it was really exciting because he's always loved or been fascinated by planes. And so then he's talking with his dad about it. And then he began to read a little bit about um, the, with his dog, like the, about the plane. Mm -hmm. And so, and then it says, uh, well, so it's like a letter from his dad. Um, I don't know if you want me to, to read it or just tell you. I think, well, we have about 20 minutes. So yeah, I, I'd love to, I, I let this get, we've just had too much fun with this. We can also do it next week as well. That could be worth yeah. doing. So yeah, tell us, yeah, do the, tell us, just generally tell, tell us. About it. Yeah, so in that, um, his dad just gives him some basic information. He says, you know, this plane is a replica of the plane that was flown by the Ecuadorian um, Ermelina Urbina, the first female pilot from Latin America in 1932. And it talks a little bit about her. Um, and it says that, you know, her dream, um, she, she achieved her dream that both men and women alike have shared for centuries uh, to be able to, to fly. And then it, it talks about how the dad was inspired by her and now is passing that on to, to his son. Um, and with this paper airplane that he received for his birthday. And so like in the actual story itself, there's not a whole lot of um, like numbers to pull out. So when I look at this, I kind of think about it like a global math story. And mm -hmm. a couple of the ideas that I have, like one would be to then send students to go and investigate and learn more about the woman, this woman and, and like for the students themselves to discover the math in her life and, and you know, telling us more about her and about um, her journeys and, and any of that. Um, and then another thing that it made me think about, actually Chad was from a global math story that I have seen you do, I think with, in, um, in Tarboro at my old school and you worked with fifth graders. Yes. And I think you did it for like reindeer racing was what they were, mm -hmm. were doing, but you had them make paper airplanes right. and then right. throw the paper airplanes and do mean, median and mode and all kinds of stuff. Um, right. measuring you know the right. distance that their plane flew and then trying again um, and so I was was thinking about that that there could be a lot of like tasks built from this using mm -hmm. it kind of like as a short story of information of um, a woman who did something really incredible and then um, use that as the context to be the the hook into a task that um, could have to do with with paper airplanes in Galapagos, mm -hmm. Betty taught us a, I don't actually remember, I think those were helicopters though. She had us make little paper mm -hmm. helicopters also. Mm -hmm. And then we did some math tasks around um, those paper helicopters and seeing, you know, how many paper clips did you need to put on? And, and if you like where you put the paper clip, did that matter? And having your helicopter spin and a lot of different things. So I think it could launch into, um, launch into a lot of tasks related to flying. Yes, that's great. I love I love that. I'm glad you remember that actually. I was thinking about that actually also. It also was one of great chaos in the classroom. I'm not sure if you remember those kids were <laughs> nuts, um, but I'm glad that it, it, they seemed like they maybe got something out of it. Um, so, and I like that you're thinking this way, right? There's also, there's all that. So you're just like, oh, airplanes. Now we can talk about speed or we can talk about speed of light or speed of sound. And, um, how far, how far can you go? And why was the supersonic jet so important for other people? Um, but also just dates, 
that's something that we do anyway, right? So the thing I really want to know is when did she fly for the first time? How long ago? How long? And, and how does that compare to the first man? Because to be honest, if the first woman in Latin America flew in 1825, that's pretty impressive. I mean, really impressive because 1825 would be before we even had a flight. But um, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you have the context and the numbers behind it, it means more, um, mm -hmm. you know. So those are, those are things I'm thinking about. That's kind of a question that we can include in a social justice question, thinking mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm so sad I'm hearing that information right now because I'm thinking now, when I was working at the university, I have a big project where students have to actually build their uh, airplanes with paper and we had a lot of, that was a whole project that uh, the, the, my students loved. And I would love, I'm thinking now how I will add this story to my yes. activities at the university. And I, I should have heard that before, what happened? <laughs> And it's Ecuadorian. What happened to me? I didn't know that before. And I have one question. Where did you buy this the book? Mi Comisariato. Really? Yeah. Have you seen that again? Um, I gave all of the Girl STEM Club teachers one as their gift at the end of the year last year. Yeah, they had them. I haven't seen it recently, but I haven't looked either. So if you want, I'll look. And if I find one, I'll pick it up for you. Please. <laughs> I yes. love it. Thank you. Keep her busy. Uh, Fatima, do you want to you share your story? We have 12, about 14 minutes still, if you'd like, or we can wait and do it next week. Creo que me hablaste, es que mi internet está fallando. No. Sí, que si quieres ir ahora o que si quieres esperar para la siguiente semana. Son cortitas, puedo ir ahora, solo que voy a resumir porque si no se va a traducir mucho. <laughs> Ok, entonces la primera, que es como la que más le gusta a mi hija, se llama Cuando sea grande. Ajá. Uh -huh. Nice, I like that book. Ok. Um, empieza, cuando sea grande, podré ser lo que quiera. Una doctora, una granjera, uh -huh. una artista. Nice. Una camionera, una cantante, una maestra, una payasa, una bombera, incluso podría ser presidenta, pero hoy solo quiero jugar. Nice. That's very good. Este de ella, verdad, que es el que más le gusta y a mí me hizo pensar, quizá bajo siempre como grados pequeños, que a veces es como lo que por el recurso que tengo aquí a mi alcance con mi hija y me hizo pensar en que bueno contemos qué personajes o cuántos personajes hay, eh, qué te hace pensar a ti, um, e introducir un poquito más en lo de qué quieres ser tú cuando seas grande, por qué, verdad abarcar esos rumbos y como me hizo pensar un poco en figuras geométricas como qué figuras ves tú en, en la historia ah, dime por qué cuéntame por qué dónde lo miras dentro de tu casa en tu cuarto o en la escuela si están en la escuela Entonces, uh -huh. y creo que no hice pausa lo siento Hans I can translate that <laughs> well I, I get um, most of it. don't worry about it. I got I got most of right. it. Um, or the gist. Um, yeah, well, so the story is uh, when I grow up and the, there are several occupations that you, she can be when she grows up. And one of the things that she uses when her daughter is to ask questions like, uh, what um, shapes do you see in the book and where do you see them in your house or where you are at? And also to introduce questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up and things like that. So that's the main idea of what she yeah, shared. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a great book because every single page has tons of math associated with it. If I'm a firefighter, think about, then you can just totally go off and go, well, here's the house and here's how much water we need. And here's the, and here's how long it takes to, you know, it takes 10 minutes for a house to burn down and the fire department is 15 miles away. Can they make it? 
Um, so th those are all kinds of questions that fall out of that too. Yeah, I was thinking maybe draw in the city just as an mm -hmm. activity. And yeah, draw a city. Well, if you are a doctor, then how far you are from home? And mm -hmm. actually seen, like I remember you saying play, designing, measuring, explaining, but located is something I really love about the geometry. So that's kind of question that we, we can ask with located, mm -hmm. location, yeah. What other questions did you have? I have one I want to share. I know. Yo también estaba pensando en cómo explorar las ideas de las matemáticas que utilizan cada profesional y um, como para explorar las matemáticas en, en el mundo real. So thinking similarly of like what's the math that the different jobs do mm -hmm. o el mm -hmm. trabajo que le interesa mm -hmm. los estudiantes o los niños. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. <clears throat> do you know what I was thinking? Um, is to illustrate the number of women per 10 people in each of those professions and having the kids just ask the question or even say, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Um, and you know where we're going to go with that. So that was, that's a good one. You have to do research on your own. That should be there because that's what I get from that book. It's you can do this. And so then we want to know what's happening now and what needs to happen next. Yeah. What other questions do you have from the book that grew out of this book? I mean, there's just tons, right? With Within each page, you can just come up with lots of options. So, yeah. We don't need to actually go through them all. Um, yeah, that's great. I'm glad we did this. What questions or thoughts or like any ideas that you have just sort of rounding things up? <clears throat> I, wonder. I think we definitely need to do a workshop for our, our teachers with this kind of activity. I, I love that. I never thought of doing this kind of thing. Oh, good. Like actually doing, asking them to choose what what you did is really lovely, and I would like to reply this in, as a workshop, asking teachers to bring their favorite story and then try to look mad at the, that story. I love, good. love that idea. A great. I'm glad. I'm glad that worked out. I'm going to share with you guys. I'll put it on the um on the on the WhatsApp the the little graph of Bishop Six, and it forms a hexagon. I'll share my screen really quickly so you could see this. Um, James Bard uh, um, is one of the authors of this, this article, um, taking this idea of just this list. And so he was one of the sort of founding board members of Teachers of Teachers. So that's sort of cool. Um, but instead of just being a list, they're really all, all related, right? Because I can explain and locate at the same time. And I, I play and explain at the time. I mean, hey, you guys have all taught your kids to play a card game or another game. So you design, but you also have to measure when you're designing. So really, they're interconnected. And um, so this is, the, this is the list. And I'll send, I'll send this little uh, hexagon to you all. Just in thinking about playing and explaining, I know pretty much any time I ever play with children, they yeah. explain to me the whole time that I'm not playing correctly and that I need to play the way that they want me to play. <laughs> that like, I, no, that's not how you do this. This is how you do this. Or they like, they're like, let's play, you know, what? Let's play teacher. But no, you're not doing it right. You have to do it this way. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's your job. That's great. <laughs> yep. Um, Gosh, I remember now when I would mess with my my kids and also their friends, I would play wrong intentionally just to get them to to do that explanation. So, yeah, that's great. Okay, well, I will share this. I think I've put it on one of my screens here, so I just find it down and, and drag it over to the WhatsApp. But this is good. Thank you, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, so in two weeks, I have I have to think about what we're doing. I think we're going to take um, like so in, in two weeks from now, and I'll, I'll send a message to you all. I really want more traditional textbooks if you can or, or like just like here are here are activities that would be boring to a student and let's see if we can make them better does that make sense 
using what we know now. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for doing this. I'm glad this is, hope this was helpful. But chat, sorry, but the yeah. idea is to bring the, 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 the book with ideas or we will work with ideas here? You know, um, well, so yeah, I would say have an idea. Don't kill yourself to come up with something. But if you can have, you know, don't write a lesson or anything, but come up with, <laughs> with something. I mean, I want you to spend a ton of time, but, you know, just for the sake of thinking of good presentation, I, we don't want dead air. So if no one can come up with an idea, you want to have some ideas so you can help us. But you mean like a math task or something yes. like a math yes. problem that would be in a typical textbook? We bring yes. that, not a book. No, like, you know, I, I don't really, I, I can find some, I think, in this connected math book. But, um, you know, like, see, can you guys see that? But they're just like basic, you know, x squared plus 2x is equal to 5 or something like that. Um, from from what would you do with that? How would you how would you turn that into something engaging? So, um, you know, that's the thing that terrified me as a teacher, to be honest. And it's the thing that we really want to do with La Porta Bierta and probably everywhere is to help them. Akali, you've talked about this, right? That we can we can help them become great teachers. But if if, if they don't have the resources to use um, in the classroom, then it's going to be really hard. And and I know from personal experience, I mean, the first year I taught after my PhD, literally the first three weeks, we used a really traditional book and, and I struggled. So I, I donated to the small school um, discovering algebra just so I can use it because I really wanted to use something that was much more engaging. It totally frees my day. So because I don't have to plan a massive lesson now. I can just take this lesson as a guide and make adjustments to our, for my students. So how can we help teachers start to build a portfolio of these kinds of lessons so that they can pull them out themselves? And you know, if, if, if we could do one lesson every two weeks, if we have two people who do one lesson every two weeks, then in, in five years, they'll have a whole set of lessons that could be all student-centered. So that's what we're thinking. So maybe we should try to pull then from the national curriculums where we are. And that would be great. Directly on that. That'd be excellent. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you, Kelly, for that suggestion. Okay, excellent. Well, I'll see you guys before then, of course. But thank you. This has been a lot of fun and and great books. Paul, send the name for that book if you can, because that was that was fun. And of course, yours is, that was awesome. I just like them all. Okay, I'll thanks everyone. All right. The activity, so you click on it and you'll get to the book. Go Perfect. I think everyone should do that for their books. All right. Thanks for having guys. me, guys. Yeah, thanks. thanks well, I'm gonna... See you guys later. Bye. Adios. Adios.